Now, when we talk about eVPN, eVPN and VXLAN are confused together. Sometimes these are called eVPN VXLAN, but these are not same. There's a lot that we can talk about it, but to simplify, VXLAN is layer two tunnel on the IP network and eVPN is a layer three routable network. So if you want to have the communication between multiple clusters of the Proxmox nodes, then you will be using eVPN. The scenario where you have nodes of the same cluster on different physical locations, so we were using VXLAN. Now you have multiple clusters across multiple regions and think it as a much bigger Proxmox environment, much bigger network where you have multiple clusters, multiple nodes, multiple locations and so on. Network is now extremely complex. When this is the scenario, of course, you will be creating layer 3 routing and this can be done with the help of VPN or BGP. Once the connections are established, then you can use the eVPN. So how we'll do that? I will show you the step by step in the Proxmox virtual environment. We will go back again to the data center and we will go here to software defined network. Now we have already seen how the zones and VNets are working and how the IPM is working. Of course, VNet firewall will be covered. In options, we earlier saw IPM, we will talk about DNS also, but let us talk about the controller. When you are creating the zone, which is the eVPN, once you create the eVPN zone, of course, the bridge IP is same across all the nodes. So, which means that bridge IP can be used as a gateway. So, I will be going here in options and here I'll click controller and I will be creating the eVPN controller here. You can have BGP also, but we will be creating the eVPN controller and here its ID will be for example eVPN-con. Make sure that you have already installed FR routing tools and then we will be creating the eVPN controller here. So peers will be in my scenario of course as I mentioned that I have these three nodes right now. So these are having different IP addresses 10.11.12.101, 10.11.12.102 and 10.11.12.102. 103. So ASN number starts from 64,500, which is already provided in the documentation, but we will be using 65,000 for the timing, which is default for this particular tutorial. We'll be using that. We have created now the eVPN controller. So I will simply go back first here to save the changes so that we can use this controller now to create the eVPN zone. So I'll come back here, click on add, click on eVPN zone. Consider we are creating a routable layer 3 network across multiple clusters now. I will give it eVPN and controller we will be choosing from the list here whether it is BGP controller or eVPN controller. So we created eVPN controller. So here VXLAN tag, this is different than the tags which we have created within the VXLAN. The purpose is that we want to have the routing within the eVPN. So it will be VXLAN tag. So it will be different than what we have already created. So we will be giving it a name 60. Now here is VNet Anycast MAC address. So it will automatically generate here and it will be assigned to all the VNets in this zone. So if you know in eVPN, when you configure the eVPN in the general scenario, you need to configure the exit gateway from the network. For example, I can use all of them and the primary exit if you configure multiple exit nodes, so you need to force at least one node so that the traffic will pass through that. And then all other things, I will leave it default and I'll click on add. The moment I click on add, eVPN zone is now created. If I go back to STN, apply the changes now, apply here. Now we'll go to the VNet, click on create and we will name it, for example, eVPN VNet. We'll be choosing the zone, which will be, of course, eVPN now and tag we have to assign here. So this tag, as I mentioned, it will be different tag. So we'll create 70, for example, isolated port, uh, which means that this VNet will not be communicating in any other network. So this is kind of the uh, private, I must say, so create. So here we can now go to apply the changes. But your question might be that why we are creating the VXLAN and why we are creating the eVPN. For example, you have a scenario where you want to have three Proxmox clusters are there, one Proxmox cluster is here, Another is in another city, third one is in a third city. So when you want to have the layer three routing, then you will be using eVPN. If you want to have the layer two tunnel, then you will be using VXLAN. If you are using the multi-cloud architecture, so for the complex network, of course, we will be using the eVPN. And now when the eVPN is configured, depending upon with which clusters it is already configured. So now your machines will be able to communicate with those machines on different clusters with the help of 
eVPN. We have talked about all the zone types and how these zones are created. For understanding networking, of course, you need to understand various concepts related to the routing protocol, routed protocols, layer 2 tunneling, IP routing, complete networking course. I have provided the link in the description where you learn all about networking. Networking is a vast field and we'll not be able to cover everything in the Proxmox course. These were the basic concepts that will help you to understand if you have Proxmox clusters across multiple regions, how you want to make sure that their communication becomes possible. So with the help of eVPN, it is possible. Depending upon the scenario, you will choose the software-defined network configuration, the zone configuration, and so on in Proxmox.